anybody that has been on the Navajo Res has either probably heard of or had some creepy things or experienced some pretty creepy things, namely skinwalkers. I have only seen one, and here is my story. I come from a small town in northern Arizona that's sandwiched between the Paiute Reservation to the north and the U.S.'s largest Navajo Res to the south. My high school being so small, a 1A high school that has, on average, 80 students enrolled every year, always had to travel south about 5 to 10 hours one way to play another high school in any sport. This means that we traveled a lot on the Navajo Res, and we usually also always usually stayed at hotels when we would head out to play and come home in the morning. But this trip was a little bit different. I remember the basketball coach saying that the school didn't have enough money to put up the teams in a hotel that trip. So, we were going to be on the road for a total of about 12 hours. I was the only male senior to play basketball that season. We had just got done playing our game and headed home on our bus, Big Blue. We were headed out, and it wasn't long, about two hours of driving before we had entered into the res. By this time, everyone was asleep, with it being about two in the morning. When we had crossed the res's border, I noticed the bus driver had sped up and was now going about 85 miles an hour. I thought this was a little weird because he never exceeded the speed limit, at least not in my high school career. For some reason, I couldn't fall asleep like the rest of my teammates, and I just sat at the back of the bus, staring out across the desolate desert landscape that was lit up by the full moon. As I looked out, I could see a figure running towards the bus at an angle of pursuit and keeping up with the bus at roughly 85 miles an hour. As this figure got closer, I saw that it was a humanoid form. As a matter of fact, it looked exactly like a human, only that the face was painted half black and half white with glowing eyes. Glowing eyes like a rabbit's eyes, reflecting light from a spotlight. I immediately thought, it's a skinwalker. The skinwalker ran up to the edge of the road and just kept up pace with the bus, hurtling sagebrush and rocks while staring right at me. After I made eye contact with the thing, I couldn't look away. It was as if something was holding my head and eyes in place. The thing just smiled at me, this very inhuman smile that went ear to ear, showing crooked, yellow, pointed teeth. I felt like I was going to throw up, and I was panicking through the entire ordeal. The skinwalker started to crumple down on all fours, still keeping up with the bus, I could see his bones crack and reform. Hair began appearing all over the skinwalker's body, and in about three seconds was now a coyote, and it ran off back into the desert, far out of view. As soon as it was gone, I ran to the onboard bathroom and puked a mixture of food and blood. I didn't want to tell anybody for fear they would think I was crazy. So, I confided in my Navajo friend she told me that I needed to see the chief, who also happened to be a friend of mine, and get a blessing. I saw him the next day in school in the parking lot. He just came up to me and mumbled something in Navajo while waving a feather serpent-like thing, turned around, got in his truck, and drove away. To this day, I haven't seen another skinwalker, and it might be due to the fact I moved away from that town and res. And if I do have to go south, I go around, way around. This story happened late June, right before the 4th of July. I don't know if I believe that this is what I truly experienced, but my best friend's great-grandmother is certain. For reference, I am a 20-year-old female. My fiance and I finally had a few days off this summer and decided to take a little trip. We live in northern Utah and decided to head to Wyoming to buy some cool fireworks and camp out. Plus, 
His grandparents live very close to our desired camping location. My fiance, whom for the story, we'll call Jake, has a hatchback and we planned on lowering the back seats and just sleeping in the car. After purchasing some fireworks, we head out to our camp location. It was called Blazion, or Blazon. The roads were rough and narrow, and there were about a thousand wild rabbits running around. Other than that, the road was pretty clear. We parked our car behind a mountainous pile of rocks to block out as much light pollution from the nearest town as possible. I had never seen the stars so bright. It was still pretty light when we got there, and I took in as much of my surroundings as my eyes could handle. We made a fire as it started to darken. We cooked some hot dogs and set off some aerial fireworks before deciding to call it a night. We climbed in the car, and Jake fell asleep pretty quickly. I, however, felt very strange. I opened the back of the car to take in the silence, the pure blackness of the night. I've been camping before, but I had never felt like this. I wasn't scared, but I wasn't comforted. The blackness ahead of me felt almost unreal, like I could reach out and touch rich black velvet. Or perhaps it felt like a projection, like what I was seeing wasn't real. I decided to call it a night and shut the hatch. I didn't sleep very well. We woke up fairly early at about 6.30 a.m. We had planned to go shooting a bit since I had never seen so much as held a gun and go to Opal for arrowhead and rock hunting. I exited the car and walked a few feet away to pee and literally 10 feet to the left of the car was a sheep's corpse. Like I said, I took a good look around when we first arrived. It wasn't too dark for me to notice the previous day. In fact, our campfire was about five feet from it. Out of morbid curiosity, I went to investigate. It was probably the most disturbing and eerie thing I had ever seen. It looked freshly killed, yet the sheep's innards and bones were entirely gone, other than the skull. The eyeballs were still intact, and that's usually the first part of a body to decompose. It was like it was completely hollowed out, but there was no blood anywhere. No dried blood or any sign that this was an animal's meal. Something else I noticed that was strange was the skin looked almost leathered where it was peeled back. But seeing as it was so fresh, I knew that was impossible. I yelled to Jake, who had been camping in this area very many times in his lifetime, to see if he had any ideas. He was completely baffled. We decided to just sleep in his grandparents' house that night, so we quickly packed up and left. As we were leaving, I saw yet another sheep's corpse exactly like the other, right on the side of the road that we had traveled on to get there. There was no way we could have missed that. We were paying very close attention to the road because of all the rabbits. Now, I was really uncomfortable. However, the rest of the trip was a lot of fun. In fact, while we were shooting, I found half an antelope skull that was a bit bleached by the sun. I thought it was pretty cool, so I put on some gloves and bagged it up with the intent of cleaning and sanitizing it when I got home. Once we got back home, I decided to stop by and see my best friend. We were driving down the road, smoking cigarettes, when my car suddenly broke down. I was feeling pretty unhappy, but while we waited for my father to come help me tow it or push it to the nearby mechanic to leave overnight, I told her about my weird sheep corpses. My best friend is Native American and immediately got very extremely uncomfortable and told me to talk to her great-grandmother. I agreed and visited within the next few days after my car had been repaired. However, I fell very ill the day after my car broke down. I had the flu, which was unusual for the time of year. I wanted to keep my visit brief in fear of getting them sick, 
but I ended up staying there all night. I told her about my experience with the sheep, the weird feeling I had the first night, and the antelope skull. She was positive I came across something called a skinwalker. A person, a witch, with the supernatural ability to turn into any animal he or she desires. To be able to transform. Legends sometimes require that the skinwalker wears a pelt of the animal. They are believed to be very evil, and Native Americans refused to talk about them at night, which explained why my best friend was so uncomfortable. Her great-grandmother also mentioned that running into a skinwalker can cause disease and bad luck, like my car breaking down and contracting the flu. After her telling me all of this, I was really scared and overwhelmed. She asked me if I took any strange souvenirs, and I told her about the antelope skull. She told me to go home, bury it in a field, and I should be fine after that. Well, I did just that. As soon as I came home, I grabbed a shovel and the skull, went to an old field and buried it. I burned some sage after I buried it at the site, in my car and in my room. However, she said that may not take care of my bad luck, and she's right. My car continues to mysteriously break down, again and again, immediately following repairs. I don't really know what to believe, Bad luck happens, and my car is a bit old, and it's bound to have problems, and I frequently still get sick. But I still can't explain what I saw, and why I felt what it felt. Does anyone have any suggestions or ideas? If this really is the work of a skinwalker, I need to know what to do, just to get my life back on track. I'm a poor college student, and I can't afford fixing my car. I just replaced the power steering rack and that sent me back $600. Immediately after getting that repaired, my brake light and training light came on. I checked my transmission fluid, and there's definitely a leak or something going on. Any advice or speculation is always appreciated. I've been telling my friends my story in hopes they might have answers, but even them, who have grown up around here, can't find an explanation for what it is I saw. I'm not a believer in religion or anything like that, so the fact that I would see something that defies reality kind of disturbs me, and I can't lie that I feel a little shaken to my core. Just about two months ago, almost to the date, I was sitting in my car after working a shift at a gas station. Oh, by the way, this was in eastern Arizona, I was sitting in my car, it was a little after midnight, and I was smoking a cigarette, getting ready to text my girlfriend to let her know I was heading over to her place. I'm looking out my windshield, kinda just staring off into space, lost in thought, smoking on my cigarette. Windows rolled down. You know how it is. The night was clear, and the moon wasn't necessarily full, but almost full enough that it gave enough illumination around me that I could see in front of me and around me. And I started to see movement, far away. Well, far away from my car, that is, but close enough that I could tell it was a person, hunched over, kind of walking on all fours, but not quite walking on all fours, hunched over like they were sneaking around. At first it made me sit up in my seat and try to squint closer, adjust my eyes to more of the darkness and to see what it was I was looking at. That's when I was able to make out, after just a few moments, that this was indeed a person who appeared to have animal pelts or animal furs all around them. It's almost as if they were sneaking around, trying to be stealthy, as if not to be seen. At the time, my car wasn't on, so if they happened to look over at me, there was no way they could know that I was even in the car. This person crouched behind a large sagebrush and stayed there for a while. I kept watching wondering what this person was doing. And then the next thing I know, one of the largest coyotes I've ever seen came from behind the sagebrush and took off into the night. It was very weird. I don't know why somebody would be out here in the middle of the desert at nighttime, covered in animal fur, and then all of a sudden, a coyote comes out. It was pretty creepy. I'm talking Stephen King levels of creepy. 
and I know that shouldn't happen. I don't want to believe in people transforming under the moon, even though it wasn't a full moon into coyotes, but I can't deny what I saw. I didn't actually see them transform, but it's weird that they would go behind a sagebrush, and then the next thing you know, a coyote appears. Anyway, I know it sounds crazy, and like some made a horror story, but it's what I saw. And afterwards, I texted my girlfriend and let her know I was on my way ASAP. I put out my cigarette and I didn't want to stay around any longer than I had to. Way back when, I was a preteen during the early 1980s. I was visiting some extended family that I had never met down before in New Mexico. They lived in a tiny village with a close-knit community, or what I would like to call a village, since I guess the concept of a village doesn't really exist in America. Anyway, I thought it was super cool to be able to explore a new culture that I'd never been exposed to before. I was from Pittsburgh, so it was basically the opposite of everything that I knew. Much more quiet, peaceful, welcoming, and so forth. However, a few hours after the arrival of me and my parents, our relatives warned us of what plagued the village during nightfall. Apparently, nobody in town went out after dark, or let their pets out after dark, because these creatures called skinwalkers would prowl the streets and possess whomever they could find. Apparently, these beings did not actually appear often, a few times a year at best, but when they visited, it was sporadic and unpredictable and nobody was willing to take the chance of stumbling upon them. Allegedly, one of the townsmen had tried to shoot a skinwalker with his rifle one night, only for the bullet to be deflected off of it and back into him, straight through his heart. After that night, the townsfolk knew they couldn't fight back and were best off being shut inside. I figured this was all an elaborate old wives' tale, just used on kids back in the day to keep them from sneaking out, and over time, the entire community eventually bought into it. Besides, being from Pittsburgh, I figured by then, I had met people far scarier than anything I could find here. I mean, being 12 years old, I purposely snuck out the back door that night just to see if I would come across one of these things, even though I doubted I would, and I didn't believe in the story anyway. I passed the town's small library when I spotted something odd a few yards away from me, and it was then that I knew I was wrong. Across from me was a lanky, crouched over figure of what was shaped like a person, but had the external appearance of a coyote, with its hands and feet wrapped in what looked to be bandages. I screamed, running for my life, as the skinwalker bounded after me. Quiet except for the padding of their feet on the ground below them. I saw somebody's door open, and an older lady yelled at me to get in. I just about flew inside, and she shut and locked it, just as this thing, a skinwalker, made their way onto the porch. In frustration, it pounded against the door and let out grunts and screams of anger, before the noises finally ceased after a few moments. The scream sounded like a mixture of a coyote yelp and a person screaming. It was awful. The lady and I just let out a sigh of relief, and she asked me who I was and what I was doing out at night. I just explained to her that I was here visiting family, and that I wanted to find out if so-called skinwalkers were real. She told me that if you wish for them to show up and desire them, they'll make sure to be there, and that I was so foolish to tempt fate like that. She said I had been caught. The witch would have taken me far away, so it wouldn't have mattered how loud I screamed. Nobody would hear me. From there, it would have skinned me alive and disguised itself as me whenever it so pleased. Luckily for me, she deemed it not safe for me to go back out, so she had me spend the night on her couch. In the morning, I was reunited with my family. And once my parents found out what happened, they wanted to leave but our relatives reassured them that it'd be a while before any skinwalkers returned. Nothing happened, and we went home a few days after that. 
I haven't visited that little town, aka a village, because it's so small, in nearly 40 years now. But that experience is still enough to make me think twice about going out at night. And if you're curious on the location, this was in Folsom Village in New Mexico. And there's a reason it's a village. It's a literal hole in the wall. There ain't much to it, but there is a very small populace there. And even less so back in the 80s. I have no idea what it looks like now, because I haven't been back there in a long time. But anyway, I try and stay far away from anywhere around there. You probably get some stories that just come across as too ridiculous to be authentic. Well, mine will sound no different. So, I apologize in advance. But I spent a few months working at Skinwalker Ranch in northern Utah. Yes, that ranch. I was one of the armed guards. When the army let me go, I didn't know what to do with myself. So I decided to start personally exploring the unknown. I hired on, expecting to see things more along the lines of UFO and sky phenomena. Believe me, I did. But what I saw the most was more earthly, and that was somehow all the more terrifying. They put me on patrol at the outer perimeter, close to the main gate. If someone without clearance put their hands on the gate, it was my duty to light them up. A man can get really self-conscious out there in the sun, where the heat will play tricks on you. I was three hours into my shift one very hot afternoon, when I saw the shadow of a tree shift. It wasn't consistent with the natural dappled sunlight created by the movement of leaves. No, the shadow of the entire trunk and branches was moving. I started to think that there could be somebody on the ground hiding in the long brush. So, I brandished my rifle, making it clear that I was armed so there would be no argument that they didn't know what kind of trouble they were in. I was sure I had made the right call when the shadow had stood up. What got me first was the eyes. They were like two white marbles that I could feel burning into me. They made me feel exposed and helpless. It was a very strange sensation, as I am normally fearless in conflict if I do say so myself. I aimed my rifle at the figure and shouted at them to turn around and leave. The feelings I got from the stare became a nearly physical sensation, pushing me back, besides the fear I was already feeling. Before my nerves could make me pull the trigger, this figure shifted like a mass of oil into a shape. It licked its lips to show me its teeth that were white as its eyes and it took off with speed that defies description. The shape it took reminded me of a puma crossed with a coyote, but was totally pitch black. It's beyond words. It would be far too convenient to say that I saw a skinwalker on Skinwalker Ranch. That's what everybody wants me to say, or that it was a flying saucer, but that was no flying saucer, or an alien. Is there anything else that looks like a human taking on the shape of an animal? It really got under my skin in that moment. But looking back, it seemed so anticlimactic. No headdress, no morbid necklace of body parts, no animal pelts. But if a skinwalker's magic really does dehumanize them, may it make sense that it would be featureless, as if robbed of details that make an individual by its dabbing and dark forces. What do you think? Well, if you ask me, and take what I say with a grain of salt, because I know so very little, it's just another thing to add on to the great pile of all the strange and creepy things that happens around here. Was it a skinwalker? I don't know. Do I believe it was supernatural in some way, or in some way demonic? Yes, I do believe that. I am writing with a terrible experience that happened to me in the fall of last year. Like many reading or listening to this, last winter seems like a century ago now. A world long before COVID and social distancing. I'm 34 years old and currently, or was a waitress based in Alabama before all of this happened. I grew up on the East Coast 
and only recently moved down here because that's where my husband's farm is. Since now that I live on a farm and being a mom, life isn't always exactly easy. But anyway, I work nights, or at least I used to, and the nights as you can imagine were slow. I was finishing my shift. It was around midnight and were open 24 hours a day. But there was another girl due to be in any minute to let me go home and end my shift. So I was sitting in our back kitchen, putting on some lipstick with a small mirror. Even at this time, we were preparing our lunches for the next day. So I decided I would go outside to the back alley and use one of the cars to apply my lipstick properly. It was one of the cooks. Him and I were very close and good friends, so I didn't feel weird about it. I could already feel that my face was funky, that I had blotched it. I'm a very proud person, and I won't be looking like a tramp. I realized before I do anything, especially leave my shift, I should step outside real quick and have a quick cigarette. I mean, after all, my shift was very stressful to say the least. I had a trucker come in and try to grope me from behind. That was a lot of fun. He ended up with a good smack across his face. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to tell you. I stepped outside, had a cigarette, or at least started to light it. And as soon as I pulled out my phone, I began to feel something weird around me. I immediately turned my phone around as to shine the screen brightness into the darkness. When two large, what I can only describe as glowing orbs of light what I can make out to be eyes shone from the reflection of the light of the screen. This was some sort of animal, some sort of creature, but everything was wrong. The head, it was like that of a skull with large protruding eye sockets that seemed empty and lifeless, other than the fiery orange orbs that sit in them. It was horrifying looking. Whatever I was looking at was tall, but it was on four legs, just like an animal. In that very moment, I began to hear whispers, almost like a satanic chanting, almost. I really don't know what else to describe it as, but I immediately ran back inside before I could do anything. But as I stared at it before I ran back inside, it began to slowly come in my direction. Again, I didn't give it a second to do anything. I ran back inside, and I must have not even hesitated because I still had my lit cigarette back in my hand when I ran back in the kitchen. My cook, who was a friend of mine, yelled at me, asking me why I'm walking in the kitchen with a lit cigarette, and that I know I'm not supposed to be smoking inside. I felt sick, utterly horrified. He could tell something was wrong, and came over to comfort me. I just began crying, and saying something horrible was out there. He looked at me puzzled and confused, stuck his head out the door, looked around, comes back in and says, I didn't see anything wrong. I'm not sure what you saw. Are you sure you're feeling okay? I just nodded, and he just told me that he would help cover me, and I needed to go home. And of course, traffic was pretty dead, like I said, and the girl taking over my shift was about to be there any minute, so it wasn't a big deal. I don't know what it is I saw that night, but it definitely made me reevaluate what I believe in, and that there is such a thing as hell. My fiance and I had traveled to Arizona, specifically to see the Beta Taquin Cliff Dwelling, a Navajo ruin carved into solid rock. We were showing up to do something where we specifically were not allowed to do, delve into the ruins. We had contingency plans and everything, just in case we got caught. Long story short, we were able to venture off by ourselves and explore the many abandoned dwellings. It was when I had found a room that was connected to additional rooms that chained deeper and deeper into the rock that I got excited and called my fiance. She was outside and I could hear her feet shuffling around. She wasn't answering me and if there's ever a time that I'm impatient, it's when I found something I wanted to show her. I began to head outside when I noticed something while nearing the exit. The shuffling of my fiance's feet wasn't coming from outside. It was coming from deeper inside the interior. I remember my mouth going dry 
with another realization. The footsteps were coming straight for me. I looked over my shoulder once and only once, and another look, and my sanity might have abandoned me. If it weren't for the eyes and the bared teeth, there wouldn't have been much to see. It would have just been a dark shadow wearing an animal pelt so old that it was withered into leather. A ruined headdress of some sort was on its head, and an almost covered two eyes that had the unfocused glare of a corpse. Whatever it was, it was meant to be human. But humans don't have claws like this thing did, or teeth as long as that did either. Neither do people have a growl so deep that it shakes your entire ribcage, and you could feel it in your sternum. It shouted a word at me. I don't know what it said, but I would later translate it to trespasser. I know that sounds incredibly cheesy, but I'm telling you exactly what happened. This didn't necessarily shout in a physical sense. I knew it was demonic in nature, because the way this communicated, the way it shouted was telepathic. I found my fiance, and she remarked at how awful I looked and asked me what had happened. I told her that I thought I'd run into a skinwalker, some sort of ancient demonic guardian. And you know what? The more and more I tell this story, especially now that I have typed it all out, I don't even believe my own story. This was back in January of 1997 when I saw the thing. I don't know exactly what you'd call it, but it terrified me, whatever it is. The thing is all I can use to describe it, because like I just told you, it was unlike anything I could ever fathom or imagine my brain. Back then, I was a much busier man, with a younger family, constantly running around. At the time, it was my wife's 40th, and we spent the evening having a great dinner. At the time, we were at the outskirts of Maine. On the way home, we were driving through a road thick with forest on both sides. I'm talking heavily thick forests. My wife was pretty intoxicated after getting caught up with all of her family. So, the kids were at home with my mother, so I pretty much was just listening to the radio. But I kept noticing something white to my side, as if it was a white horse or something in the forest. But every time I glanced over, I couldn't see anything. Something was catching my eye, and I didn't know what it was. I just figured I had been driving too much, and should probably pull over for coffee or something at the next stop. I kept brushing my hair out of my eyes, trying to focus on the road, watching my wife sleep with her head against the window. But I couldn't close my eyes for long, even though I was getting pretty tired. Before me, a large leopard-like white skeleton. I don't know how else to describe it. It was freaky looking. This thing was on all fours and jumped out into the road in front of me. I'd say about a hundred yards. I slammed on the brakes and tried to leverage my arm against my wife's stomach to prevent her from jolting forward. As the car stopped, with the engine still running, the headlights illuminated whatever this thing was. It was long very long, with the body of a white leopard-like looking thing, with a large hump on its back that stuck out with spikes or two bones, almost like antlers. It was very grotesque looking. It was almost like a hyena in how long its body was, and the way its back arched and its spine poked out. The best way I can describe it is imagine a skinned alive creature that's disfigured, I don't know what it was, I don't know what it was, but the overwhelming sensation of that I was about to die took over me. I have never felt such a sensation of evil before, ever. Where this thing supposedly had eyes were just empty eye sockets. It's like I was looking at a corpse, but yet it was moving around. I don't even know how this thing constitutes as a living thing. It looked dead, as if it was resurrected. That's why I believe this came from the pits of hell. There's no other description for it. No animal looks like this. My wife immediately woke up, and this sobered her up pretty quickly. She was speechless for a moment, before screaming and throwing her face into my lap, 
as if that was going to be a safe place. In that very moment, I immediately felt my adrenaline go from 0 to 100 in that very moment, and I slammed on the ignition, flying towards the creature in hopes to zoom right around it and get out of there, since it was more on my side of the road, and there was nobody else coming that I could see. Well, I was successful. In fact, right as I dove towards the creature and then around it, it actually jumped off the road into part of the forest or the ditch to the right of the road. The rest of the way home, I was pretty much so shot my nerves were, I was probably doing 20 or 30 miles an hour over the speed limit. In fact, it's only a miracle of God that I wasn't pulled over. I would have got slammed with a speeding ticket, hands down. I wasn't really sure how to cope or deal with a situation like this. I mean, who was I to even talk to? I knew talking to the police would have got me nowhere, so I didn't even bother. But anyway, that time has long passed, and my wife ended up passing away in 2010 from breast cancer. But one of our last conversations, when she looked at me with one of the most intense expressions on her face, she still told me she thought about that thing and feared that it will come back for her, or us, or our kids. And in my gravest of feelings, I knew what she meant, because for years I tried to suppress that horrible encounter. But it has haunted us, no matter how much we suppressed it, no matter how much we didn't talk about it, whatever that demon was. She worried that after she died, this thing would come to take her soul. I wanted to send my story to you, because I believe that what we saw that day was 100% demonic. In no way, shape, or form could it have been a human or another creature of this world. You know as well as anybody that there's a lot of things out there that can't be explained. I feel like what I have to tell you falls into that category very well. So I keep chickens out here in one of the most hospitable regions of Arizona's wilderness. I'm not going to give you a ton of backstory on my life because I feel that it's not really relevant to what I have to say. But anyway, chickens don't really require all that much comfort. Give them seed and water and a place to run and they're happy. I've gone years without any issues with any predators. In fact, I even made my coop as secure as a prison, and only a desperate fox, or whatever, would try to get in. Something started getting in to my chickens, without doing much damage to the coop. It was doing it consistently, whatever it was, as if I had set up some sort of chicken vending machine out here in the wild. I wasn't going to have any such business. So I set up a trail cam to monitor the coop at night. Cameras don't lie, but my eyes had a hard time believing what they saw. First few nights went okay, but then I got good footage of the outline of a man with sloped shoulders coming up to the coop, and the birds got agitated like they knew who this was, and it wasn't good. I wondered how this guy was so good at getting to my chickens without leaving any blood or damaging the fence or really anything. I got my answer when the man would appear to be melted down into the shape of a snake and almost slithered its way into the coop, past all barriers, without disturbing anything except the chickens. This large snake, the closest resemblance I can give you is that of a cobra, or so it looked like it, and appeared to be that. It clamped down on a hen head first, apparently trying to muffle the struggle and slithered back out. Then it almost seemed to kind of form back into what a crouched man would be, and walked off with my hen by the neck. I'm no stranger to campfire tales, but I've always just heard them. I've never seen one. That sight gave me a new fear that I found hard to deal with. That coop was probably more secure than my house, pound for pound. And here, I saw a shape-shifting thing on camera. Whatever this was, was able to slip in and out with perfect silence. What if it decided to come for me when there weren't any chickens left? Did, did I see one of those Navajo witches that turned into monsters? Or is this something else entirely? Whatever the figure was, was like a man that seemed to be covered in animal pelts, or what I can only best describe as animal pelts.
In July 2004, near Gallup, New Mexico, I had my first and only encounter ever with a skinwalker. Before this, I used to say I'll believe it when I see it. Well, I'm a believer now. What I saw was not full human, nor full animal either. I was moving and had just completed the cleaning and was with my 10 year old son. We had called it a night and were headed to our new place. As we walked out the front door, I saw a figure move from behind my neighbor's car to a nearby tree that stood between our apartments. It didn't have red glowing eyes, snarling teeth, or a rotten smell, but it did move quickly, but not quick enough to avoid the light from a nearby light post and the porch lights. It didn't look at me or come toward me. It moved as if trying to avoid being seen. I was within 15 feet of it, but I did not look back to fully inspect it. What I saw was a wolf-like animal that sort of resembled the beast in Beauty and the Beast, just not cartoonish. It had brown fur that completely covered it. It wasn't a pelt. It appeared to be a very large wolf. It didn't have any human traits, except that it walked on its hind legs. It cowered behind the tree as we got into our vehicle. When we got in, I asked my son, Did you see that? Thankfully, he hadn't. My brother-in-law insists that it wasn't a skinwalker because I would have never seen it. To this day, I can picture what it looked like, know they exist, and I pray that I never encounter one ever again. Back years ago, from about 2003 to 2009, I lived in a rundown, beaten down trailer park in New Mexico. It didn't have the greatest of residents. In fact, a lot of my neighbors were scumbags. And when I mean scumbags, I mean just evil, nasty people. People that would abuse the system, steal things, just scum of people. I don't like to talk down about people, but these, like I said, were just evil, nasty people. Unfortunately, I can't say much better about myself during that time. I was going through a pretty severe drug addiction very toxic relationship, and I too fit right in with all the rest. It wasn't until around 2009 when I got rescued out of that and found faith in Jesus. Since then, I've turned my life around completely and now serve the light. The reason I'm writing to you is during my time there, what, five, six years? I believe I saw monsters. And no, they were not drug-induced hallucinations. Even though I was on drugs, they weren't the kind that make you hallucinate. And whatever this was, I had seen it. My girlfriend at the time, or my ex now, had also seen it. But they always seemed to gravitate towards the far end of the trailer park, where this old Navajo lady used to live. I always got the creeps going around there. Turns out that she practiced black magic, was heavily into the occult and witchcraft. I've only seen her a couple times. But even her face, her eyes were so sunken in, she looked dead. I don't know anything about Navajo tradition, nor do I know about occultism or really witchcraft. But I know enough that I've seen the trinkets she had around her trailer, the things that she practiced. It was enough for me to know what kind of person she was. The entire area around her trailer just had this ominous energy to it. It's like you just got the heebie-jeebies walking by it. And sometimes at night, looking in our window, we can see these terrible human-like shapes walking from the desert towards her trailer and circling. It was terrifying. It's like we were seeing the silhouettes of werewolves or wolf-like creatures. I don't even know how to describe it. And because she's Navajo, does that mean she controlled these things? Again, I don't really know much about Navajo tradition or what magic they practice. But I believe now, knowing what I know spiritually, that it had to be a massive component in what she did and how she did it. I live alone. I live off my own land, and I don't let anybody trespass on my property. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. 
It could be OCD, or it could be something else. But it's my land, my rules. I woke up thinking that somebody was sure looking for a fight one night. The automatic light was kicked off by something moving nearby the house. And nothing triggers that light except something tall enough and large enough. So when that light was in my eyes, I was up and getting my shotgun ready to get an explanation. I did laps around my house, but saw nothing. I looked up and saw that something big, like a buzzard, was drifting real lazy, like around the moon. But that was it. There was barely any animal presence about that night, and no people for sure. So I just chalked it up to a glitch of some kind and went back to bed. I was woken by that light two or three more times before sun up, and boy, was I hot about it. I was yelling and stomping my feet on the dirt. Somebody was toying with me, and it wasn't funny. I couldn't figure out for the life of me where they were hiding. I didn't have hardly any trees, and none of them were big enough to duck behind. After three nights of the same nonsense, same light coming on, and same result of getting out of the bed, I looked up, and there, that big bird was circling the moon again. I shot at it in a fit of rage, and the body came tumbling down out of the sky. Except instead of crash landing, it transformed into something shaped like a human being with feathered headdress, just like an Indian. The eyes were glowing, and I'd never seen anything like it before. I think it could tell, because I saw craziness and laughter. It charged me, and I shot at it with the other barrel. When I opened my eyes, there were feathers drifting down, and I heard a crazy noise, like laughter or howling, like something you'd hear out of a lunatic asylum. But I didn't see anything. I'm honestly beginning to feel like I'm cracking up that I myself should be in a nut house. Am I hallucinating, or is this real? Am I dealing with something supernatural? I don't even know. Anyway, I had heard my grandson listening to your show, and I thought I'd see if my story might be good, if anything, to you. Do you have any answers, or am I just a complete nut and having a mental breakdown? Because what I'm going through just seems so far-fetched and unbelievable that I have a hard time even believing and accepting myself without telling myself that this didn't happen. Is this normal? I live in Southern Colorado, and a long time ago, I had a project for my job which took me to Albuquerque, New Mexico, for about two months. However, long story short, for reasons I don't really care to go into, especially since it's been decades at this point. I was let go from my job and had to go home after only three weeks. I was left with an over seven hour drive to complete in order to get back. My route would take me through the Navajo region and I didn't think much of it at the time. I had passed through it before without issue, albeit during the day. I had been driving for some hours by the time I got there and I really, really had to use the bathroom. However, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to spot any sort of gas station. For some context, this was before cell phones or even GPS, so I didn't have anything except an outdated map to point me in the right direction. To my luck, which I would soon learn was actually my misfortune, I found a campfire going on in the distance from the road I was driving on. I figured I could just pull up nearby, ask the kind folks for directions to the nearest gas station, be informed of where that was, and then be on my way. However, when I arrived, I couldn't find anybody there. The fire was still blazing strongly, making it all the more puzzling. It was as if the people decided to abandon the place as soon as they saw my car. I heard something moving about the shrubbery a few feet away from me, and out came a wild sheep. Soon after, it was followed by a coyote. I didn't understand how the two animals could coexist peacefully together, given their predator-prey difference. 
they also acted bizarre. They were completely still and just staring at me, their eyes glowing from reflecting of the fire. To try and indicate I was friendly, I just gave a small wave and jokingly asked, where did the people go? I mean, it's not completely unheard of for people to catch coyote pups and domesticate them, so I figured that was the case, which would make sense while the sheep and coyote were hanging out together. But that's when I noticed there was something very wrong about these two animals. They were abnormally tall, their limbs reminding me of tree branches, and their torsos were too short and wide to make sense for either species. I began a bad feeling the more I looked and studied these creatures. I slowly backed away, and with every step I took, they seemed to take their own, crawling towards me, kind of like a cat getting ready to pounce. Then, one of them let out this horrendous scream, and the fire all in one blew out, as if it were merely a candle. I yelled for my life and raced back towards my car. And once I made my way in, they gave chase after me, being very quick to be behind me, and slammed against the door as they just barely missed their opportunity to enter. I flew off down the road, the screeching of my tires echoing across the sky, but I didn't dare look back. I only stopped when I finally came across a gas station, hallelujah, using the opportunity to relieve myself and finally get something to eat. I was still paranoid though, and got out of there as fast as I could. When I finally arrived home, I crashed on my couch. When I got in my car the following morning, I noticed it had human handprints on the windows. It only then dawned upon me that I passed through the native reservation. I still think about this event from time to time, and I'm still relatively close to where it happened. So sometimes, I have to drive through the area. However. If it's after dark, I don't dare do it. I just take the long way and go around the region. I'm honestly not ever up for having another experience like that again. That was more than enough for me. I have a very close mate of mine that just celebrated his 18th birthday just a few weeks back. And yes, we had a safe social distance birthday party, so to speak. But, we had a very dreadful experience. I had gone back with him to have a fag. And for those that are in America, that means a cigarette, so don't take that the wrong way. He lives out in a village, or I guess out in the middle of nowhere, if you were to put this into American terms. So, we're talking desolate, nowhere, surrounded by woods. And his village is very tiny, with not a lot of people around especially out during the nighttime. But when we stepped out, this thing came out of the woods. I don't know how to describe it. It was like a demon or something. It had weird looking eyes, a long white body. It was almost skeletal is the best way I can describe its details. It kind of seemed slimy, but completely hairless. Its face nearly resembled a skeletal crocodile and its eyes were large and yellow. My friend and I were frozen in fear. Immediately, I thought I should pull my phone out to try and get a picture of this thing. I mean, can you imagine the Snapchat story this would make? But then I thought, who would believe me? Everybody would just laugh at me and tell me great costume. Maybe the drink I was having was spiked. This thing noticed us and began hissing and groveling and pressing its slimy body against the ground, coming towards us. I was terrified, and so was my mate. This was like some sci-fi genetic experiment or something gone wrong. I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing, or he, but this was something terrible, something gruesome. It reminded us that something the government would try and cover up. And ever since I saw this thing, I have had the most bizarre nightmares. For whatever reason, it didn't pursue us, attack us, or try to kill us. After hissing at us, it quickly, as if being alerted to something, fled back into the woods where it came from. I know that sounds cliche, but somehow, I believe it was sparing us. Why? 
I don't know. We ran back inside, and that pretty much killed the vibe of our small party. I'm not really sure how to handle this new reality, considering I've always been the type of person to make fun of people for believing fairy tales, dragons, and all that nonsense. And now I've been proven that something other than this exists. My girlfriend even keeps asking me what's wrong and that I need to go to the doctor. It's really affected me. I often think now that I have the virus too because I break out in cold sweats. Or maybe it's just something that I saw changed me, taking me out of my everyday reality and reminding me that there are other things in the universe that I don't understand or perhaps want to understand. I hope that in writing this, other people will perhaps hear me and come forward and share their experience. My mate thinks it's a skinwalker. Whatever that is, I've never even heard of it. I don't know, but I hope to God that it stays the bloody hell away from me. That was terrible, man. It gave me nightmares and still does. I'm at a very low point in my life. I'm completely and utterly homeless and currently typing this from a library computer. I don't have any friends or family to crash with and my only form of shelter was the gym that I work at. Since it's open 24 seven, I used to sleep in the back rooms after I got off my shift. However, I was eventually caught and threatened to be fired if I did it again leaving me with nowhere to stay. I can't even afford a hotel, which left me very desperate. About a week ago, I settled down with what little I have in the woods nearby my workplace. I chose them not only due to their proximity, but ultimately, their seclusion. At the time, I considered myself very lucky given that dense forestry is somewhat uncommon where I live, which is the southwestern US. I didn't want what little I had to be stolen. I didn't really have any issues with the first few nights. However, I was recently pulled out of my sleep to the sounds of something moving around me. I tried to figure out what it was, but I could only really make out what it was in front of me, which was the dim, buzzing lights from the back of the gym, a few hundred feet away from me where I was at. What I was hearing seemed to be coming from behind me. I couldn't tell if it was a human or an animal, but I wasn't sure which one to be more paranoid about. I took out my crappy burner phone and checked the time, which read nearly 3 a.m. I turned my phone around and shone it into the trees nearby, trying to see what was there, but nothing. Not knowing what else to do, I gathered all of my possessions and laid on top of them, just in case it was somebody looking to steal them. It wasn't terribly comfortable, but neither was sleeping out in the woods. Yesterday morning, I hid my things to the best of my ability before I went to work. Upon returning to my stuff, I was happy to find it undisturbed. I set up camp for the night, and it wasn't long before I nodded off in a dream world. It seemed to be the same thing as last night. I flipped my phone open again, once again being three in the morning. I knew this was going to drive me insane, so I used the light of my phone to look around again and got out of my blankets and weaved around the trees a bit. Eventually, the light shone upon something. It didn't appear to be human nor animal, but a disturbing combination of both. Oddly enough, it also looked to be a combination of alive and dead. I then came to discover that it was in fact a crouched over human wearing the pelt of what appeared to be a bobcat. I didn't try to talk to them. I didn't even scream. I just turned around and ran until I was back inside the gym. My coworker asked what was going on and I explained it to him. He didn't really seem to understand but was nice enough to let me sleep in the building for the night and promised to not tell our boss, which brings us to today. I'm not sure what to do from here. Part of me is too exhausted to try bothering to move again and is hopeful that if I just leave the person alone, they'll leave me alone too. Another part of my fear is that it's only a matter of time before I'm skinned 
just like the bobcat they were wearing upon their back. I know. I'll make a decision eventually, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Before I tell you this information, I'm going to just ask that you keep my credentials anonymous for my protection and for my safety, since if my name is exposed, I don't even want to imagine the repercussions. I used to work alongside the Albuquerque police. Not exactly for the police, but I worked in conjunction with them. Again, it's hard to explain, but it might be better that way. Anyway, I know people talk about skinwalkers and them not being real, but there's more that goes on out in the desert than you would imagine. In fact, many of my friends who are officers all have their own terrifying stories to share, many of them unexplainable and paranormal. There was a case years back, back in 2004, of a man who supposedly had murdered his girlfriend. He claims, and apparently went crazy after this incident and being interrogated, he claims that a skinwalker had taken his girlfriend and skinned her and wore her skin to be her. Now if that isn't crazy, I don't know what is. We've gotten people who are hopped up on meth and LSD that can come up with more coherent believable stories. But his story never changed. His details, everything checked out which is why it made it more terrifying. He claimed that him and his girlfriend went to some Navajo flea market in which she showed several of the vendors pictures of the skinwalkers and asked about it. She was faced with repercussions, apparently, and somehow, going by what he said, attracted a skinwalker in which she had showed up missing. Now, I don't know if I believe any of that, but I believe he had something to do with her disappearance that he had something to do with her murder. Next thing you know, an officer had caught him at a local abandoned gas station far out of town and was apparently wearing her skin, wearing it like a suit, like it had been carved off her body. I know it's horrifying and very grotesque. He was detained and arrested on the spot and interrogated deeply about where he had hid the rest of her remains. He didn't say where, and he stuck to his story about what had happened. Again, crazy stuff happens out here. Who knows if he was a skinwalker, or his girlfriend was a skinwalker, or a skinwalker got his girlfriend or he was possessed, or maybe he was just high as a kite. This was a pretty normal 20-year-old kid who had a pretty good track record and wasn't into mischief at all. So who really knows? It's another mystery in the paranormal files. I don't want to give away too much, but I thought you might find this interesting. Stay safe. Please don't hate me if this is not a skinwalker that I'm talking about. I'm not 100% sure. I am just really scared about this experience, and it has haunted me ever since. I'm so scared that somebody I know will find it, and I don't want to be judged. So sorry if this is a little long. Anyway, my dad lives in Spain, about an hour away from Barcelona. It's right near the beach without too many tourists. There are many mountains with small villages. My dad lives in a small apartment complex with a pool on one side of a mountain. When I visit him, my room is the only room facing the mountain, along with other apartments, of course. The blinds don't work and I don't like sleeping with a completely dark sight into the forest or mountain area. So, I sleep with a blanket covering the window. There are small holes on the sides of the blanket. The kitchen faces towards the mountain as well. One day, when we got home from the airport, since my dad was picking me up, my dad went to the kitchen to get a drink, and when I went to my room to unpack. Suddenly, my dad calls for me to come to the kitchen and I hurry. Right below our window is what looks like a wild boar. I'm not really sure. It is kind of covered by plants and leaves from the trees, but we can see what looks like a big pig, except it's much more hairy. My dad then throws that it's a rather large sausage, but it gets scared and runs away. Later that night, I go to the kitchen and get a late night snack. 
my dad is already asleep in the room next to mine. I look out the window to see if there's a boar, which it isn't, but the sausage that he threw earlier is gone. The high grass and plants that were there before have been pressed down to form a circle, kind of like field markings by aliens, except it's not aliens. I then go back to my room to hang up my carpet over my window. My back is turned towards the window to pick up the blanket as I hear a soft knock on the glass. I swing around quickly to face the window, but it's pitch black. I am a very paranoid person and have read thousands of creepy stories, and I am absolutely not one of those people to go investigate. So, immediately, I throw the blanket over the window and go to bed. I wake up a couple of hours later to somebody crying. It sounds like a dog whimpering. My neighbor has three dogs, so I figure it's one of them. I take a quick glance around the room. Nothing unusual, but I still have this weird feeling. Look towards the window, and still nothing unusual. That is, until I lie down again, facing the window, and look out one of the small holes to see two eyes looking straight at me. I nope out of there, and run to the other balcony facing towards the beach, away from the mountainside. I get some cool air, and just relax a bit before going to sleep on the couch. The couch is facing the kitchen, and I can't help but look out the window. There is nothing. I relax a bit and close my eyes, though I don't sleep the rest of the night. The next morning, my dad wakes me up and asks why I'm sleeping on the couch. I mumbled something about being scared, and the conversation slowly glides to a stop. We decide to get a group of friends and go hiking. Among the group of friends is a boy my age 16 who is a complete D-bag and always is really annoying and mean. I'm even reluctant to not want to go on this trip because of last night's experience. But my dad forces me and I end up tagging along as the last one in the back. We have walked for a couple of hours and I suddenly start to feel uneasy. The boy my age, we'll call him John, notices and walks over to me. John asks if I'm okay, and I answer yes. He says he had the weirdest experience last night. They too live in the same building, and his room also facing the mountains. He tells me about this weird feeling he had, and his dogs wouldn't stop whining. I figure the sound I heard was them start to think it was all in my head. He then says he saw something in the shape of a human, but a bit taller, standing on the balcony that I have to my room, where, if you stand there, you can look directly through my window into my room. I stop, and my blood runs cold, on the verge of crying. As I said, I'm very paranoid. I ask if he's kidding me, because it wouldn't be the first time. He knows how paranoid I am, and he swears even though he's annoying, he's trustworthy at least, and I can tell when he's lying. I decide to tell him about my experience, and he spends about 10 minutes just cussing and saying stuff like, wow, wow, shut up, no way. I realize we are far behind and can't even see our group anymore. I don't know this mountain, and we decide to walk back and call my dad when we get home, since there's nothing else we can do, and we'd rather not get lost. Walking back, it's getting dark, and now I'm getting scared. He assures me everything is okay, and I realize he has changed from his douchey act to a much more serious demeanor. Suddenly, I catch a glimpse of something tall walking right beside us, and I spin around to face it. Words can't even describe what I saw, and I'm getting chills even writing this. The creature quickly ran away but I saw a little into the bushes of what was hunched over appeared to be a six foot tall human looking thing with light hairs all over its body, long hands. It freaked me out. I know my description is terrible, but it's what I saw. I scream and John looks over and only catches a glimpse of it too. Still not sure what he saw. We were about half an hour away from our house 
and we run the rest of the way. Now I immediately call my dad and tell him what we saw. He says they were wondering where we were and tries to calm me down by saying things like it's just your imagination. They send two men back because the one of them had a panic attack and my dad later told me that he had one because he saw what we saw but my dad couldn't tell me that at the time because of my state of paranoia. We wait for the two men to get back. We locked all the doors and windows are covered up and lights are out. So we sit down and watch a movie. John is really nice now and calms me down. We hear a knock at the door, but I convince him not to open it since the two men have the keys. The knocking increases and the sound is unbearable after two straight minutes with knocking. So, John opens the door. I stood behind the door, leading to my room, hiding. John yells that there's nobody, and I get extreme goosebumps. I feel like somebody is watching me, and turn towards the window and rip the blanket off. And there, standing on the balcony, is the thing. And the only thing separating us is glass, which it could easily break and just walk in. John comes running and tries to get me to go away from the window, but I'm frozen and crying, nearly peeing my pants. The thing then screams an inhuman scream. To me, it sounded like fingers on a chalkboard. It jumps over the balcony and then it's gone. All of this happened in less than five seconds. I still don't know what I saw, and John says he didn't see anything, even though I could tell he's lying and he doesn't want anyone to know what he saw, which only makes me look like a freak. My dad and the group eventually come home to find me huddled in John's arms, crying hysterically. Turns out the two men had just walked to the beach to get beer, to calm the one with the panic attack down. I'm not saying what I saw was a skinwalker. It was just the first thing that popped into my head when I had to describe it, if I would have to say that it was, it would be a skinwalker or the werewolf from Harry Potter, where the teacher turns out to be a hairless werewolf. My dad's girlfriend moved out a few months after, complaining that she couldn't live there anymore, and not saying why exactly she couldn't. I'm sorry for such the long post, but I'm not exactly sure what this could be. I want to say Skinwalker, but I could be wrong. I'll let you be the judge. So, I'm a van dweller. If that's not self-explainable enough, it's basically when somebody willingly lives in a van rather than a house or apartment. It's not too bad. My van is equipped with basically everything a regular house would have. It's just in a more compact space. And ultimately, it is cheaper in the long run. If I need a shower, I can stop by the gym. If I needed to use the bathroom, I will either use the closest gas station or the great outdoors. In recent years, it has become pretty trendy to Vandwell, and that is no surprise given the ridiculously housing and rent prices these days. Listen, I'm not here to sound like a hipster, but I have been at this gig for nearly two decades now, so I'd argue I've got a lot more experience than most people do on the road, good and bad. I've had people try to steal my van or steal things from inside my van. Sometimes, they've tried to steal my van while I'm still inside of it. I've had weirdos follow me for miles, meth heads breaking in my windows, cops pulling me over for thinking I'm hauling immigrants, and so forth. If you and I met at a bar, I could keep you occupied all night with all kinds of crazy tales from my life on the road. At the same time, I have met many wonderful people throughout all sorts of cultures in both American continents and have seen countless beautiful sights, whether they are cities with skyscraper towers or open ranges where the population is sparse. I have gotten to try so many kinds of foods and hear all kinds of music and listen to unique stories and perspectives on life. Van life isn't perfect and it's definitely hard work but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'll die knowing I've lived my life to the fullest, and that's all I could really ask for. Still, none of my experiences 
good or bad, compared to the surrealness of when I was lurking in the mountains of Montana about 10 years ago. I had been traveling around the northwestern U.S. for a couple of months and was preparing to drive back down south as fall was getting ready to make its return. It was a night in around early September, I'd say, and I found myself inside an aloof campsite somewhere in the western part of the state. Whenever I could, I slept in a brightly lit, busy area. Sounds like hell, but curtains over the windows along with earplugs make it, so it's really not that bad. I did this for safety reasons, obviously. Less chance of somebody trying to steal my stuff. Being in the western half of the US though, I had to get used to the idea that I wouldn't always find a place like that, given how spread out its geography is. A lot of nights in my van and I were completely alone in wide, empty areas. I had trouble sleeping through the first few nights because of it, but I grew accustomed to it, eventually. I even left the curtains open so I could see the stars through my window. The lack of light pollution was quite a nice change of pace, and I began to dread having to sleep in cities again. On this particular night, I had begun a fire and cracked open a beer playing on a banjo that I had gotten just a few months prior. The cell service and internet was shoddy where I was at, at best, and at the time, I hadn't yet gone out of my way to get a mobile plan, which involved usage of satellites. So I wasn't left with much to entertain myself, with except my banjo, and a few books. I stopped playing as soon as my eye caught sight of an animal lurking somewhere in the distance. The fire provided enough light to make out a figure of what appeared to be an elk, but there was something extremely strange about its appearance. It seemed to be discolored, its legs were abnormally long, and it looked like it had too many joints. When I squinted my eyes to get a better look at it, my heart began racing as I noticed its face was only a skull. The rest of its body was covered in fur, but past its neck, it was just bone. No skin, eyes, know anything. I was trying to make sense of it in my head, but no matter how I tried to come to a conclusion, I always thought of another way that it couldn't be explained. And that's when I noticed it didn't have any hooves, but what seemed to be human hands on both the end of its front and back legs. Even though it didn't visibly have any eyes, it seemed to stare at me. It didn't move, however. Not wanting to move myself, I simply froze. I couldn't do much but try and calm myself down by focusing on the chirps of the bugs that surrounded me and the thing. And after what felt like forever, which was probably actually only a minute, I began to slowly play my banjo again. I don't know why I did this, if I'm being honest. It didn't react. I continued this for a bit until I ultimately decided to get up from the log I'd been sitting on and walk backwards into my van silently closing the doors and shut the curtains, all the while making sure to keep the interior dark. I was tempted to climb into the driver's seat and take off, but at the same time, I didn't want to cause any disturbances. I wasn't sure whether or not it was a hostile creature. It was just standing there and staring. I didn't want to alarm it and cause it to lash out and damage my van, especially in the middle of nowhere. I crawled in bed instead and tried to sleep. After a few minutes, I heard what sounded like the snort of a horse, and I heard something shifting around my van. The fire outside was still lit, and through the curtains, I could make out the silhouette of the elk mere feet away from me. It continued to pace around, and it seemed to do this for hours. Somehow, I fell asleep, and by the time morning came, I pulled back the curtains to check to see if it was still there. I couldn't find anything. The fire had put itself out and was still smoking, and I decided it was still safe to head out and take a leak. As soon as I opened my car door, I noticed a pile of sticks right in front of it. I was confused, but I figured I must have not noticed them sitting there in the evening before. I had to go to the bathroom pretty bad so I ignored it and did my business, then went about my day. 
I was on my way down south, and when I stopped again that night, I noticed I was still in Montana, but pretty far from the campsite I'd stayed the night before. I slept in the parking lot and woke up the next morning to what I swore was the same pile of sticks just outside my van, except this time, it was slightly less in quantity. Again, I ignored it and continued on my travels. When I took a nap in northern Wyoming, I still woke up to the sticks, and yet again, in an even smaller pile. I was freaked out as anybody would be. Part of me was tempted to take the sticks and lock them in my car, so whoever or whatever was messing with me would have to go out of their way to bother me. Still, at the same time, I did not think it was a good idea to touch the things, and at that rate, they disappear soon enough anyway. It wasn't until I'd gotten towards the middle half of Wyoming did the sticks finally stop showing up. For the rest of that year, I had no problems. I told my family and friends of the strange incident, but they treated my sighting as nothing more than an urban legend, and the stick incident as a mere coincidence. If I'm being honest, so did I. I figured I was just saying things, that maybe it was something about the high altitudes that threw my brain and vision off. The following summer, I traveled back up to the northwest and stopped about 50 miles from the campsite where I first saw the elk. My heart sank when I woke up the following morning to another pile of sticks right outside my van. I swore it was even smaller than the last time. My paranoia then got the best of me so I decided to say screw my plans and leave then and there, going off to sleep when I only had to. When I did rest that night, I found two sticks crossed over each other, like an X the following morning. When I drove even further, I woke up to none at all. When I saw more of my friends about a month later, one of them said her aunt was a psychic and could probably tell me what was going on. I didn't really believe in paranormal stuff, but with what I had experienced, I was open to any sort of input. She got me on the phone with her aunt, and her aunt said that while she wasn't absolutely certain, she believed I did something to disturb a skinwalker on what it considered its sacred grounds, and used these sticks as a warning to get me to get out and stay far away, and that the longer I lingered, the less chances I had. What it ended up doing to me, though, was only left to the imagination. She said I was good to get out of there when I did, because who knows what would have ended up happening the next night. It wasn't long before the idea that my banjo music appalled the skinwalker so much that it threatened to kill me made its way around my friend group as an inside joke. I laughed along with them, but deep down, I was and still am terrified. I have not returned to the area since, and will never go back, because I know it will remember me. Hell, at this point, I basically refuse to touch any state that borders Montana. I am a bit disappointed, given how beautiful the Mountain West is. If this never happened, I would probably spend most of my summers up there. I do sometimes wonder if I could cheat in the sense of visiting Alberta or Saskatchewan instead but something tells me skinwalkers don't abide by modern concepts of borders. To me, it's just not worth the risk, or putting my family through the trouble of needing my body transported from Canada to the US, or having to deal with me being missing entirely from a different country. Whatever the case, I'm glad I've stayed far away to not bother it anymore. I don't even want to think about what might have happened to any other potential people out there that didn't listen to the warnings it's given them. Maybe I'm a little too paranoid, or carried away because of my experience, but I can't help but wonder if that's why so many people go missing in the mountains, only to never turn up again.